It's Tuesday, December 31st, which is the last day of the year, and it's all government news today because they try to put in all the bad stuff at the end of the year when no one's paying attention. You say that, but that's a terrible lead-in to the first story because the first story is a glimmer of hope at the end of a dark (laughs) year. Maybe? I don't know. It sounds good to me. I, I can't see what could be wrong with this. Trump could mandate free access to federally funded research papers. Publishers warn the change could jeopardize the IP of American organizations. So this is actually an Obama rule. Uh, and the Obama rule was like, you have to provide free access eventually. And one eventually year. was defined as a year. Yeah, yeah. one year later. So uh, this would be immediately. And a lot of the publishers are just reing out as, as hard as they possibly can. And uh, a lot of scientists right now pay to publish. So that was one of the warnings. Is like, oh, scientists are going to have to pay to publish, but it doesn't cost anything to publish anything online. And a lot of the people that are actually doing the peer review are volunteer. Like, it almost seems like the publishers are making it seem like as if the publishing fee goes to paying scientists to review papers that are published, but that's not the case. But they do invite them. Oh, <laughs> that invite, invitation is going to cost thousands of dollars. So this uh, it reminds me of the music companies where... The internet came about, and everybody was like, wait, we don't need music companies. And the music company was like, no, you're <laughs> killing jobs. And it's like, yeah, you don't serve a function. Sorry. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see research overflow. Yeah, or like a Wikipedia style. <laughs> you know, people would be lining up to get, because you could do like a, a merit point system. <laughs> fake internet points. And it would be fake internet points as a peer review researcher. People would love that. Come on. I think Bill Gates or somebody could put up like $80 million, which is a drop in the bucket, and then all of yeah. this problem could be gone tomorrow. He could stop heating his pools for 2020 <laughs> and take care of this. <laughs> Meanwhile, the uh, the 5G issue. We're definitely, 5G or 2020 is going to be a 5G year, but I think it's going to be a, a year of uh, folly. I think the issue has descended into full on debacle. Yeah. Because now we have some 5G, but it's kind of not anything different than 4G. And it's, well, it is different. It doesn't cover nearly as much area. That's the big difference. So, eh, but it's a political thing. It seems to be a big hot button issue for politicians to talk about. And this is no different because you got to drum up that old uh, specter of Huawei. And that's exactly what they're doing. (laughs) IT Pro reports that the U.S. is pushing for a homegrown 5G to solve the Huawei woes reason we're mentioning it specifically is the pentagon is saying hey maybe open source is the solution here if huawei wants us to use their technology if they're willing to open source the protocols then maybe that would make sense but that would also open up the protocol for companies other than huawei to produce their own equipment yeah so it turns out that the towers no one makes them (laughs) it's huawei makes the towers and that's the situation that we're in (laughs) so that's a problem. Uh, open source uh, it seems like a good idea. It's odd that the Pentagon would be pushing for that because you got to think that they want to sneak something in there to like spy or whatever. Maybe they're just going to do that through legislation. There are other ways to sneak stuff in. See also the open source elliptic curve encryption thing, which is completely open. And they were like, here, we've chosen these points on the curve. Just use those. Trust me. It's an innocent intention that we use those points on the curve. Didn't matter that it was open source. But, you know, probably better than the alternative. Uh, We will see later that there maybe is a little more to the Huawei uh, wolf crime (laughs) than we would like to believe as logical people. Meanwhile, if you got a shiny new drone under the Christmas tree, you might be thinking, boy, this is a lot of fun. Did you register? Did you (laughs) register with the FAA? Well, you don't have to yet. New rule would make it possible to track and identify nearly all drones flying in the U.S. The rule would implement a remote ID system to identify and track drones in real time. This is down to things that weigh like 150 grams, which seems extraordinarily small. Pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah. And this is going to be some kind of uh, transponder radio signal, and that's going to add weight to your drone. It's going to reduce your flight time. Yeah. I don't... uh, uh, Also, I said you don't have to register, but you actually do, don't you? Yeah. 
You do have to register. It, well, it depends. You don't have to do this yet. Yeah. Uh, I think the weight limit is also much higher right now. I think it's at least 250 grams, although it varies a little bit depending on where you are. And, you know, if you live near an airport, it's never okay to fly a drone. Now, some of the government people were pushing back against this, and you're thinking, oh, yes, for our freedoms. No, the thing they're pushing back against is how long you have to add the radio transponder and register. If they're going to give you up to three years, they don't like that. They want it to be a much shorter amount of time. Yeah. Although this does still have the loophole. If you build it yourself, you don't have to add the trans- transponder, which is surprising. Uh, you know what we need to get on the store is 90% drones. <laughs> and a drill kit. <laughs> yeah, like the dr- that's what I was just thinking. It's like the equivalent drill kit. Yeah. yeah. It's like 3D print all your stuff. Here's some, here's some electronics. Just DIY it yourself. Some open source software to throw in there. Mm, that'd be a big, t- a big ticket item right there. Facial recognition. So we talk about facial recognition. It seems like almost every week a new city bans facial recognition or a country. You know, a lot of the EU is against it. That's not the case this week. This week, we see one city that went hard against facial recognition and now is seeing the reality of those rules. Perhaps a little unintended consequences (laughs) from government legislation. (laughs) Who could have predicted that? It's hard to ban facial recognition in the era of the iPhone face unlock. So San Francisco has quietly amended their law, and some other cities are looking at amending their laws. They're allowing facial recognition technology to be used in the case of like personal devices, people that work in government, their personal devices, and that kind of thing, because technically iPhone face unlock, that was illegal. But in this case, it was city workers who had been given an iPhone through the city. And by the letter of that law... Can't have an iPhone. They couldn't unlock their phone. Okay. Even if they turn the unlock, the face unlock off, you still can't have it. Yeah. Because the technology's there. the sheriff's office was using it. And they were like, <laughs> ah, go ahead. Which. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. That seems to defeat the purpose, doesn't it? <laughs> We've got that computer in the corner. We'll just turn it off for now. It's fine. Oh, we can turn it back on. We'll let, <laughs> we'll let it go to sleep. We're not going <laughs> to unplug it. <clears throat> T-Mobile and Sprint are set to merge, except... Those pesky states. Damn, they want their cut. Damn those states' rights. <laughs> and they're lining up to sue to stop it from happening, but they have uh, maybe a, an unexpected series of defenders in this court case. T-Mobile and Sprint deal is good, actually, the feds tell court in the uh, state's lawsuit. So 13 states are suing to block the deal. The DOJ and the FCC want it to go through. Well, if the FCC wants it to go through, it must be terrible, right? I don't agree with it. They do talk about how uh, in the documents that were finally unsealed after the FCC and DOJ did their thing, the people were like, yeah, this is going to reduce the number of options, which is bad for the consumer. But don't worry, DirecTV. DirecTV will save us all as the fourth option. It won't. It'll probably go out of business. I don't understand. Like, It seems like you know, the first order of business after a merger like that is to design, decide on a tower technology because right now, right now I think the radios are fundamentally incompatible. So what in what universe does it make sense to maintain two sets of towers unless you just turn off one set of towers because they're just not profitable? That would be a universe where you are subsidized by the taxpayer to replace those towers via the FCC. Uh. Because there's a lot of money to be spread around there to really make a lot of friends with those contracts. <laughs> well, you know, all the money that Huawei was getting should be freed up now, right? <laughs> <laughs> How else are you going to get that? Now, you might have noticed we did a story from IT Pro back there. What's IT Pro? Well, it's an alternative to a paywall. That's what it is. <laughs> I really made an effort this week, but I forgot that uh, NBC and USA Today. Uh, my home computer, I do not see these, but we do see them here. And I know, I know. <laughs> don't, don't tell me what ad blocker to use. I'm not going to explain it again. <laughs> but I really tried this week. <laughs> oh, no. The Pentagon has told the military personnel not to use at-home DNA kits. Now, I feel like that this article, I think this is the original source. Uh, and it stands to reason. It's like, you know, don't use home DNA kits. If you get a D- home DNA kit for a Christmas present, uh, don't run that. And the reason for that is because who owns those databases now may not be who owns those databases in the future. And it's easy to imagine that like somebody who works in an intelligence service now may have been in the military previously. So can you imagine if you were, 
you know, I don't know, the GRU or, uh, you know, somebody in China or whatever, how easy it would be to break into these commercial databases and steal them. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, run him. Like, we're dealing with this guy. We don't know if he's a spy or not. Run his, his, his data. And then you run the data and it's like, oh... This guy was like from Chicago, and this is his real name, and it's a DNA match, or it's a it's a family match. It's a it's an incredible, incredible intelligence source. And they cover the whole like, oh, you have to opt into that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Because there's already been a case where one of these companies was acquired by yeah. another company who isn't necessarily going to honor those opt-ins. Well, and hackers that break into these commercial systems, which are not properly secured at all. Are not going to honor anything like they if, if an intelligence service is in they would probably get in copy this and you would never even know that they were there so 23 and me more like 23 in ukraine <laughs> you might remember a while back we talked about baltimore there were some mysterious planes in the sky in baltimore and they were there all the time well it turns out those were surveillance planes and they were spying on the people of baltimore and I think some proof came out that it was the more lower income areas of Baltimore, which happened to be a certain ethnicity. That's profiling. And a lot of people didn't like that. <laughs> One of those people was the, uh, what is he, a sheriff or a police chief? I think he's a police chief. He spoke out heavily against this because it was profiling. It was probably a little bit racist. Here's the weird thing. They're bringing the planes back. And guess who? One of the biggest supporters is. <laughs> that guy. Oh, no. The Baltimore Sun reports that the Baltimore police are backing a pilot program for surveillance planes, reviving a controversial program. That, it, the, the, the headline is contradictory. It's like, it's a pilot program, but we're reviving it. And it's like, well, then it's not a pilot program, is it? <laughs> we're telling them about it this time. <laughs> oh, it's commissioner, not chief. So this is the police commissioner who was against it. But then there was a mayor who decided he liked it, and he... And then there's the company, the private company that's doing it, who is probably in business with the mayor. And all of a sudden, the police commissioner is for it, but he was careful to say it has nothing to do with the mayor. Mm. And I think it's a mayor election year. So, yeah. a little suspicious. But these planes, now this is not real time, so they say. I mean, what are the odds that it's not real time? Well, it, does that make it any less insidious? <laughs> so, they, if, for example, if there's a shooting... Then, as they investigate the shooting, they're going to have aerial surveillance, probably a high percentage chance of that area, and they're going to go back and they're going to review it. But uh, that means that when there isn't a shooting, they're still going to be watching you. We also don't have clarity on what type of surveillance is being conducted from the plane. Like, we know that they're doing video surveillance, but there is the option also of doing surveillance of things like cell phone track it, the traffic. You can monitor the wireless signals from phones and stuff like that. Not necessarily enough to scrape the data, but like unique IDs on a phone. So it's like, oh, there was a shooting two days ago. Was there a surveillance plane that happened to be in the area at that time? Yes. Okay, well, let's see what cell phones pinged in that time. Okay, let's hit up the carrier and be like, we need more info on these cell phones. Yeah, it's basically an eye in the sky. The kind of thing that you would think would be part of like a communist police state. <laughs> Weird. It's in Baltimore. Spotify. So, well, let's go back and let's talk about uh, Facebook sort of opened a terrible floodgate by saying, do whatever you want as far as political advertisements on our platform. And they were heavily criticized and a lot of people took advantage of it and it was in the news a lot. So then Twitter comes out and says, we're not like them. We're better. We're not doing any political ads. And that seems to be becoming a bit of a bandwagon. Spotify has announced a pause on political advertising following the Twitter ban. And actually, their, re like their, their press release here is one of the more well-written press releases on this. Because if you read the Twitter press release, it, it doesn't seem like they really have like a press release team. It's really just more like slobbering and non-sequiturs. <laughs> well, they, they can't communicate in more than, <laughs> what, 240 characters? Or is it 280 now? But the, the Spotify press release is like, look, the... the the, the political landscape is just so terrible that we just can't trust anyone to tell the truth, so we're just not going to accept any advertising. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, because I think it's the same argument that Zuckerberg was making, except they went the other way. Yeah. It's like, we can't, no way can we vet these. We have no idea how to do that, so we're just not doing it. Versus Zuckerberg's I, I, I like what that I like what Spotify's doing a lot more than what Zuckerberg did. Well, I mean, political ads are... It's one of those things that as people we accept are total garbage, 
They're evil. They're mean spirited. They're usually untrue, and yet they're this part of our lives that we accept. Yes, it's uh, it's almost like if you have a platform where you can talk to people and you tell them things like, "Hey, did you know that the Level One website is hosted on Linode?" And Linode is working with us to sponsor episodes <laughs> of the news. The people will then use the affiliate code and then go buy things in Linode. Are we doing our first? <laughs> I can't remember if we had a. Uh, we probably have several security section things that we can. Yeah, yeah. So Linode, kind of link below, and and there's also some other stuff. But uh, yeah, they're sponsoring a few episodes of the news every every now and again. So thanks, Linode. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's definitely with the the podcast. It seems like if a politician has the balls to go on an hour-long podcast and like actually talk like a human being instead of in sound bites, that is a lot for people. People really appreciate that and yeah. like it humanizes them. But I, I, could Donald Trump ever do that or Hillary Clinton? I mean, Hillary Clinton went on Howard Stern. Oh my God, he's dead to me. <laughs> but he softballed her the entire time. He knew better than. I mean, he's not getting killed. He's not getting shot in the back of the head. Uh, I think John Stewart pioneered that because he had Clinton on at the height of the Clinton controversy, like uh, Bill Clinton, not Hillary. But I, I think he softballed him too. Yeah, no, he really did. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, there's nobody necessarily that isn't baby stepping around them. But how great would it be if there was just this like combative, hardcore? The problem there is you can never find somebody who's nonpartisan enough. Yeah, they'll probably just take the microphone off and walk away. <laughs> Well, if you love e-scootering and e-biking, I wonder how these fare in cold weather season. Probably insanely dangerous. But I mean, that would be really cold, wouldn't it? You'd have to bundle up uh, there's, to e-scooter around. I saw the video of uh, Casey Neistat snowboarding around New York City because he has a, a boosted board, that, so it's kind of like that. And they don't work at all, even in like in moderate weather because the wheels are small in New York. And so he was just snowboarding. Well, yeah, New York is what we're talking about. And that's why I figure that's a fairly cold place during the harsh winter to be e-scootering and e-biking. But guess what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Electric bikes and scooters will stay illegal in New York thanks to Governor Cuomo. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Cuomo. Cuomo. Now, this one is another uh, just uh, we're ruled by children <laughs> because he has on the record supported these kinds of initiatives because he's like a liberal guy and he wants like the green stuff but it turns out one of the co-sponsors of this bill upset him somehow and so he's killed this bill it looks like he's killed this bill <laughs> as a petty revenge tactic <laughs> not the will of the people his excuse no helmet laws couldn't you just stipulate that Seems like that would be a quick fix. It's like, all right, get in there, add two lines to this thing. Let's get it passed again. Jesus. Somebody, that, that person's going to have to go kiss his ring. <laughs> it's like, you will have your scooters. Be gone. <laughs> California is at the forefront of giving these crazy new technologies laws, unlike New York. They really cater to them, and now Californians are going to get one more exciting thing. Next on California's roads, autonomous pizza delivery trucks. California gives the green light to companies testing driverless delivery vehicles. So, yeah. Not much more to report here other than autonomous delivery vehicles. I can't wait for the crazy and hilarious ways this goes wrong in terms of you getting your pizza out of the car. <laughs> like there's something's going to happen. You can't get to it. People are going to put items back in the car that don't belong there. Children are going to crawl in. <laughs> pets. It's going to be hilarious. I can't wait for that. That'd be a great way to... Like, what if there's a shooting and you've got the gun and you want to get rid of the gun? So you see the pizza delivery, delivery truck delivering, you sprint over and you throw the gun in. And it <laughs> closes up. What a great way to dispose of a weapon. But also <laughs> terrible because it seems like the people at the pizza place would probably report that. Well, they're going to find it, but then they've got 20 different stops mm. where it could have gone. Well, no, I guess each slot might be different. There's probably 360 video from like 12 different cameras on the thing too. That's true. Got to collect all that data so you can train the AI. And there definitely will be people who get ratted out by the pizza truck. Yeah. Mm, that's another cool thing to think about. I mean, not cool, like, like dystopia, terrifying, but <laughs> it'll be funny when it happens. <laughs> This is a kind of a little bit of a non-story, but uh, it was a slow week 
So we kept it in. And if you don't know what a warrant canary is, sometimes things happen if you're a tech company and you're not allowed to talk about it. It's a secret. That's how our government works <laughs> in secret. And what you can do though is preemptively you can say, Hey, this has never happened. <laughs> and then one day that goes away. <laughs> so you didn't really say anything, but you did. So imagine having a banner on the website that is like, the government has never asked us to do anything that is really horrible and awful. And then one day that banner disappears. It's like the no workplace accident in X days, you know, <laughs> and then it goes to zero. Well, Cloudflare uh, removed one of theirs and everybody was like, oh my God, but it turns out it was not really yeah. what happened. Cloudflare removes Warrant Canary. Thoughtful Post says it can no longer say it hasn't removed a site due to political pressure. So removes Warrant Canary, that is a little strong. That was like, I read that and I was like, <gasps> but no, you read it and they've expanded their Warrant Canary actually. And the expanded Warrant Canary has an asterisk and it says, hey, there was this incident with the Daily Stormer where we elected to remove it, which was like this crazy white supremacist Nazi like just 8chan and they, they were just like this this site is so terrible and so toxic and so many bad things have come from this website that even though it probably is free speech it's not worth the headache so we're going to delete it but, not for political reasons but just because it was a headache but that is the one that changed because they were like well we decided this but we can't say it's not political pressure because people were pressuring them yeah. and it was very political but at the same time Cloudflare is just a business. They can yeah. decide who they want to do business with. I can I can totally understand. We're catching a ton of flack. Like like imagine if you had a Holiday Inn, right? And you had a conference room, and the Klan wanted to come <laughs> in your conference room. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, free it's... speech is fine. They can have their Klan meeting, but as a business, you could be like, you know what? I think that'll cost me business. <laughs> Not gonna do it. So. Yeah. More power to them. I actually like the transparency of Cloudflare there, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, most businesses wouldn't even do that. And to admit that it was somewhat political pressure. A lot of people are going to be defending uh, the other side of that coin in the comments. Uh, that's horrifying. That's probably going to get us demonetized. <sighs> Did the, When was the fake news term coined? Was that 2017? Or was that during the election? Oh, no. I think the term fake news has been around a lot longer than that. It's just been popularized. Well, when Trump Trump re yeah. really made it a thing. Uh, uh, maybe 2016. I don't know. But it seems like the if we look at the curve of the fake news thing, it's like we're on the downward slope. People don't talk about it that much anymore because it, it became such a meme. But uh, you know who is talking about it <laughs> is Bloomberg in the boardroom. <laughs> Fake news report cost Bloomberg $7.6 million in fines. So Bloomberg reported on fake news and gave credence to fake news through reporting on it like as if it was legit. And so they have been fined $7.6 million. But importantly, it was uh, it was a very, I don't know how if I want to say well laid out. It was uh, Vinci. So this company Vinci, a press release came out. But instead of Vinci.com, it was from Vinci.group. But it looked exactly like a Vinci press release. And it said some bad things about Vinci. So the, the stock price plummeted as soon as Bloomberg published that. And then it came about and it was like, oh, wait, that was fake. And probably shouldn't have done that. But we're talking about billions of dollars in you know stock price. So I you got to wonder, was that just malicious or was somebody looking to buy low there? <laughs> probably a little bit of both looks like well, this wasn't in the u.s this is in the eu but their version of the sec has got to be looking into that right yeah. come on so but the uh the real argument, business damage the argument was hey you're bloomberg you should vet the stories <laughs> maybe call somebody make sure it's true before you put it on your website i don't know that's an interesting one Facial recognition, well, we talked about here in the U.S., unexpected consequences when you ban it, but at the same time, do you let it run rampant? Because mm. eh, ring doorbells, kind of terrifying. Well, in New Zealand, they have some interesting case law that has come about. <laughs> Worker fired for declining a face scan has been awarded $23,200. And like half of that was for uh, damage to his reputation and an emotional distress, which I thought was pretty cool. So this guy was an electrician. 
and uh, it was for a construction company. And his construction company decided to stop using paper timesheets and switch to a face scan. So you face scan when you're in and out, except you don't face scan when you're in and out for lunch. And so the company said, hey, this is a safety measure. We're going to make sure that everybody's on site so we can do an evacuation. So the labor board looked at it and said, well, when people go to lunch, they usually go off site and you don't make them scan their face. So that argument doesn't hold water. This is probably to prevent timesheet fraud, not for safety reasons. And you also didn't adequately brief the employees on alternatives or really discuss anything. You pretty much just bought it and decided to do everything and then sort of rammed it down employees' throats. And so employees probably do have the right to refuse this. And he actually did exactly what he should do because there was like a... He was on vacation. They did this during... Well, they introduced the idea of it and they put it out. It's like, does anybody have any opinions on this? He had opinions, strong ones. And then they waited till he went on vacation for two weeks and set it all up. And we got back and he showed up and he was like, no, I'm not scanning my face. And after the second day of that, they fired him. So he actually, on paper, he, there was a paper trail of him saying, I'm not comfortable with this. I need to know what, why you're doing it. Tell me more about it. Why can't I just do this instead? And that's probably what got him his money. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what are you doing with the biometrics data? What are you doing to make sure that it's safeguarded? Because he's probably seen the level one news <laughs> and like all the stories about like ring doorbells and Face scanners, it's like... It was a third-party company, too. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter what you're doing. What are they doing? And you don't know what they're doing because you're just paying them to do it. <laughs> Those people that install the, the horribly insecure electronic locks in their apartment buildings that lets just anybody wander into an apartment. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm. Libra. 2020 was going to be the year of Libra. And we were all going to... It was going to revolutionize, revolutionize our lives. And make everything better and get rid of all corruption and money laundering and a beautiful new world. Well, that's not going to happen. And it's kind of official at this point. Libra's cryptocurrency, from or Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency project, has failed in its current form. That's a direct quote from the Swiss president of the Libra Association. So that's our Switzerland's finance minister, I guess, an outgoing president, uh, Uriel Marr. Well, both the finance minister and the president. This is like the president of Switzerland said yeah. this. But the Libra group is in Switzerland. Yeah. So he is working more closely with it then. There, there are undertones here that maybe Libra was not really what it was advertised to be. And the the Swiss organization overseeing it was like, wait, wait, what, what are you doing? Plus all the commercial interests have pulled out because of the Zuckerberg factor. Yeah. You don't mess with money because that's the ultimate form of control and governments won't let you do that. I don't know what Zuckerberg was thinking. <laughs> I guess he was buying into his own hype. But no. <laughs> they can't stop us. We've got a billion users. I mean, the only reason Bitcoin ever got to where it got is because it's so decentralized and they, there's no one they can go after. But that's not true of Facebook. <laughs> Uh, we talk about uh, all the EU countries. Uh, France, I think, was the latest who, to announce, yes, we are going to start taxing those big tech firms. Because we live in an era where the tax system is all about real goods and big data doesn't really sell you anything. They, they sell you to other people. And they make a lot of money. Everybody wants their money. And we have another one entering the fray. Italy to start taxing big tech firms on January 1st. So, yeah, Italy has said, hey, this is, you know, this is the end of big companies making a lot of money on our citizenry. We want to cut of that. So Google, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft are the ones they name specifically that they're interested in. This is a great stock photo, which brings up, we didn't mention, yes, Chris is not here, but we do know why. We're not going to tell you why, but it's for a valid reason. So don't be like, where's Krista? Free. She's gone. She's not even going to be here for New Year's. How sad. GPS. What's the name of the European one? Glonass? Is it? I thought that was the Russian one. Oh, maybe. Anyway, anyway other people have their own GPS services, and they're supposed to be better, and yeah, it's a lot of arguing. <laughs> but we can use each other stuff, which is cool, because then it makes it more accurate. And now a new person has entered the fray, not a person, a country, <laughs> but 
you gotta wonder is there anything lurking in these <laughs> China to compete Baidu competitor to GPS Dow I'm just trying to think like new power. launches it's probably not Baidu because that's more Middle Eastern yeah I don't know well the Associated Press is saying that China is launching their own GPS satellites they're gonna do a new GPS constellation and quite frankly, I don't blame them. It sure does look like Russia has completely compromised the U- U- U.S. GPS system because their ships can fake GPS locations now. We've reported on that a couple of times, so I get it. Uh, and actually, or is it this episode of the news or the next one? China's like, like their rockets, they're ramping up to launch a ton of stuff. They helped Ethiopia. So like China's really doing a lot of stuff with satellites and space. Yeah. Although, they make it sound like this is almost a, a perfect clone of GPS. Yeah. Like it's not using the, the new technology. But they're controlling weird. themselves. Probably so, just new uh, encryption keys. I mean, new encryption keys would be enough to defeat Russia if they, uh, they figured out what the encryption keys were. But as you alluded, China's space program really getting back on track. Now, they had this uh, rocket that's sort of been mothballed for a couple of years, and it's back. That's better than ever. <laughs> China's huge Long March 5 rocket returns to flight in a dazzling nighttime launch. So this is going to be like cargo. Like this is the the Chinese equivalent of like Falcon Heavy, except I think it's probably way more. Like it produces yeah. way, way, way more pollution. And thrust. And thrust. <laughs> <laughs> so they are really uh, getting back on track, putting a lot of stuff in space. This one was a, the the, lit, the name of this satellite is literally practice. <laughs> this is the practice satellite. And they're going to do the... Uh, this is going to be the rocket that launches their like new space station. And uh, the Mars. They've got a Mars mission in 2020. And the robot for that is apparently insanely huge. And so this thing is going to launch it into orbit so it can get to Mars. A lot of exciting times in the Chinese space program. Oh, these are slightly out of order. No. There it is. I'm oh, gonna, yeah. I'm going to pull that one up because... Because that one, because I already mentioned it. I mean, yeah. it's... I, I move this because it's not technically the China block, but it kind of is. It kind of is, Because yeah. here's the thing. We talk about countries that you think about when you think about technology. And every couple of weeks, there's one in the news, and you're like, wow, they're in the news for technology? That's cool. You know, it's not a country you'd ever expect. I got to think that Ethiopia is toward the bottom of the list. <laughs> <laughs> I read that headline, and I was like... Uh, now, I did not read this headline because Quartz Africa is a paywall alternative link. <laughs> and the one I read was just like, Ethiopia launched a rocket. And I was like, Ethiopia has a space center? They have a launch pad? Wow, that's amazing. Uh, they don't. <laughs> well, okay. So the Quartz Africa headline is Ethiopia has launched its first satellite into space with China's help. So China launched this satellite is meant to help with... Uh, agricultural surveying weather and also to know more about mining and like where possible places to mine could be and that, that sort of thing the control station ethiopia does actually have a satellite orbit control station but this was launched from like the shangsan province or something in, in china yeah, from china and this was an eight million dollar project not a lot of money but hey eight million dollars right Six million from China. Yeah. China gave mm. Ethiopia six million in subsidies to then buy Chinese technology. But still, an eight million dollar I mean, that's I mean, for a satellite, that's not a terrible price. And I think we can be totally confident that this satellite's not gonna do anything except what the Ethiopians intend for it to do. <laughs> that would be amazing like where did you store the master encryption keys it's like hang on let me get it from from ethiopia's agricultural satellite one second uh and finally in chinese news huawei we have seen huawei on uh, a hell of a story arc here in 2019 there was the accusations of spying there was the big ban and then toward the end of the year record sales they just they powered through it and then there was the android debacle well, now we might see a little bit of how they uh, got through those stormy waters. TechCrunch reports that Huawei reportedly got by with a lot of help from the Chinese government. So this talks a little bit about the history of Huawei and how it's like they're a global technology superpower. How did they get there? And it turns out with lots of loans and grants from the Chinese government. But you really, I mean, okay, 
it's a Chinese company, they're going to get help from the Chinese government. U.S. companies get help from the U.S. government in the form of tax breaks and loans and other things. Well, this article talks about some of the specific things that, that Huawei got. And then Huawei, you know, was asked about this and Huawei sort of denied some things. So, I don't know. Well, what can they do? Yeah. I mean, even if they're completely innocent, the specter is there. Yeah. And they have to try to avoid that, whatever they do. So. Like, oh, the U.S. government subsidized the nuclear program in Westinghouse and GE. Yeah, well, other governments certainly subsidize big companies. Or, you know, it's like the government paid a lot for first the right of uh, a first sale of, like, the plutonium byproducts of the nuclear industries of Westinghouse and GE. Oh, or the, simply a tax program <laughs> that allows them to pay almost nothing. <laughs> Isn't that a form of subsidy? <laughs> Uh, corporate welfare turkey now turkey is another country that you might not think about when it comes to big manufacturing but it turns out Amer so turkey and america have this frenemy relationship especially right now it's like heating up right now yeah and we have that nuclear base there uh. yeah. but the thing is we do manufacture a lot of american cars in turkey now we don't ship them back here they're the ones that get sold in the eu but a lot of the plants are over there. So they do have manufacturing. Actually, Turkey makes guns you can buy in the U.S. Hmm. And they're supposed to be pretty good. I don't own one of them. But uh, this one was unexpected, at least to me. Turkey unveils its first fully homemade car. $3.7 billion factory that's going to make electric cars. Yeah, they, they want to produce 175,000 cars a year for the electric vehicle in the electric vehicle project at a cost of 22 billion lira or 3.7 billion US dollars over 13 years, which 3.7 billion dollars over 13 years. That seems kind of low considering that they're producing 175,000 cars a year. Are you ready for the terrible name for this car? <laughs> it's the Tog. Tog. Guten Tog. Uh, not that kind of Tog. <laughs> I think that means something uh, in their language. I don't remember why. But yeah, another electric car on the market. And it's Turkish. And uh, Edrigan is, uh, of course, taking credit for this. So mm, it'll be amazing if corruption actually lets this get off the ground. It's funny that that is an electric car. Considering the thing that we are at odds with Turkey about is selling oil to terrorists. Hmm. Or maybe, no, it was buying oil from terrorists. That's what it was. Mm. Hey, maybe if they get off their oil de in, or oil <laughs> dependence, they can stop doing business with terrorists and everybody will win, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, in Turkey, another rare thing that you see is the core system disagreeing with Edrigan. <laughs> I wonder how fearful these people are for their lives. <laughs> Turkey's Wikipedia block violates human rights, the high court has ruled. So... Turkey's two-year-old ban on Wikipedia is uh, contravenes freedom of expression. So Wikipedia has been unbanned. And there was some conference that Jimmy Wales, the Wikipedia founder, was invited to a couple of years ago. And then he was disinvited because it was Turkey. Well, presumably he has travel rights to Turkey again. That seems awfully punitive. That seems... I would not go. That seems terrifying. The reason Wikipedia was blocked was because it had one unflattering article about Edrigan. Oh, it was about the terrorist oil sales. Yeah. And they were like, this is fake. And they said, well, here's the documentation. Uh, we got plenty of citations on that article. Maybe you should go read them and it's banned. <laughs> nope. None uh, for you. Yeah. And speaking of banning things, Turkey bans Wikipedia, but Iran says, hold my beer. <laughs> Let's just turn it off. And it's been off for months, but now they seem to be widening the program. Reuters reports that Iran has curbed internet before possible new protests, according to reports. So Iran basically was going to do some things that they thought the authorities in Iran thought would probably be unpopular. So they turned off the internet preemptively. Hmm. But it's weird because they clearly don't have the infrastructure to just switch it off. Yeah. So they're turning off on like various mobile providers, but not all of them. And sometimes you can VPN, sometimes you can't. It's a very weird patchwork but I guess it works, right? <laughs> With enough practice, they'll get it. They'll get it down. Don't worry. Oh, uh, that is a perfect, perfect segue. Did you do that on purpose? Yes. <laughs> because practice is exactly what was happening uh, 
a little bit further to the east, <laughs> as Mr. Putin has decided to test his intranet. Russia successfully tests its unplugged internet. So successfully tests is in quotation marks there. It broke a lot of things. But according to this, uh, well, not the B- this is from the BBC News, but according to the source the BBC News is reporting from, people internal to Russia didn't notice that they were, you know, didn't notice that they were unplugged from the internet as long as they were using local Russian services. So I think the idea here is kind of like the Great Firewall of China. If you make foreign companies stuff terrible enough, nobody will use foreign companies stuff, even though it's still technically connected to the internet. Well, I'd say I don't think that's true because I, well, I don't know. Is the nationalism in Russia enough to keep people from consuming our media? I don't think so. Not like it is in China. So there's always going to be that. I think a lot of people in Russia are acutely aware of the Putin factor. Kind of yeah. like a, a well, lot of people in America are yeah, acutely aware of. We're aware of. <laughs> but I don't consume any Russian media that I'm aware of. Russia Today has usually got some stories. I, Russia Today is a great source of like revealing what is going on for real in our government. <laughs> the same way that CNN is a really good source for revealing what's actually going on in the Russian government. <laughs> but the two never do the opposite. <laughs> yeah. So you, kinda, you have to take them both. <laughs> Uh, what, what do we got for tomorrow? This is a weird week. So tomorrow is going to be business and I think robots. We're going to ring in the new year with robots. You heard it here first. And then uh, the two smaller sections of nonsense on Friday. Woo!